As promised, I wanted to do a video on the Charlotte Mason Elementary Arithmetic Series as well. I have been talking about this resource for probably the last year because I bought this, I want to say last year sometime, but it is still on sale right now and it is a great deal. So if any of this looks appealing to you, now might be the time to go get this one. And then um, this one I was not going to purchase because you could just use this um, and I'll show you how in just a second. Um, without needing this but this just makes everything so much easier and a fellow instagrammer sarah at canon cottage academy she was so sweet she reached out to me after i had expressed some interest in you know knowing more about this and she was using it with one of her children and she messaged me and she said you know i i don't think this is what we're going to end up using after all i don't think she had any problems with it i just think it wasn't quite the right fit for their current situation so she said you know how about um would you want to buy this? And I was like, once she told me the price, I was like, absolutely yes. So I wasn't going to get this, but I could not pass up the deal because it's going to make things so much easier for me um, as we're going through uh, this series for first grade. So let me start here first. This comes as a bundle. Right now, I think it's like $34.12 plus shipping, which is what I paid for it last year. So it's still on sale. This is very helpful. You can see previews of this on... Um, the Simply Charlotte Mason YouTube channel. If you want to get a, a glimpse of like maybe what's in there, and I'll just kind of show you this for a second while I'm talking. So it's actually them, Rochelle and Sonia, doing immersion lessons basically. So this covers K through 12. Both of these do. This came together. I did just see this at the um, homeschool consignment store I've talked about several times nearby. So it is around on the internet if you want to try to shop around and get the cheapest deal. But I bought this new for 34 together. Um, so this is your visual for showing you how to enact the lessons. And this is your book. Um, I've only gone through the part that applies to us for first grade. We did start a little bit of the student book last year. Right at the end of kindergarten, he was ready. And I said, let's just go ahead and do this. So um, I, we stopped at notation and place value. I did as far as the teacher uh, portion was concerned. So she basically... Um, Rochelle has gone through and has given you sort of a quick like overview. I mean, there's really no good way to um, shorten uh, what you need to know about Charlotte Mason. Um, I didn't say that right at all, but you guys know what I mean. There's no way to condense. <laughs> That's what I was looking for. You can't really condense um, all the great things that Charlotte Mason had to say about education into a book of this size, but Rochelle certainly does an excellent job of making it very concise, giving you what you need to know just for math. This is the scope and sequence. I'm going to hold that just a second there so you can see. And then, so um, that was in chapter one, so let me back up a second. Chapter one is all of the whys behind why you would do it this way. It covers habit training. Um, you can just see, I, you know, I read through this last year, and I'll, I'm sure I will review many times throughout the year. So chapter one is an overview of kind of the why behind. Then chapter two gets into the actual, um, what you're teaching. So here's arithmetic. It explains like what arithmetic was like in Charlotte's schools. There's uh, places to write things and then there's little side notes. And then what I did when I was just working through this is just wrote notes to myself. So you can see there I wrote, they associate the amount to the number. They do small sums with numbers that they know. They build numbers with manipulatives or a 10 frame in our case. Uh, she did not mention the 10 frame in here. That was me. Um, but building numbers with manipulatives, manipulatives is one of the parts. And then count forwards and backwards. That was the main ones that I felt like we were probably going to cover in kindergarten. And then, you know, on into first grade, it's going to be more. So this is for the teacher. Um, the student would not look at this. This gives you an overview of what you're supposed to do, how you're supposed to teach. Um, I mean, essentially, it's a number line, but they're creating their own. And this helps them with place value when they can see um, that there is a different space for each one of the values. You know, you have your individual units, and you have your tens, and you have your hundreds. Um, yeah. Anyway, that's a note to myself. <laughs> so I stopped here. And um, we didn't get anywhere near this, so you know I'm not gonna read ahead too much because I wanna make sure I'm living in the moment with what we're learning. And then, let me show you his notebook. So I got this on Amazon. I can't remember how much it was, it wasn't much. 
And you can see we got to the number four and I showed him that he's gonna go three spaces over and each time, you'll see what I mean in the lessons here, how we enacted this, but each time he's just gonna write the number that we're currently exploring. And then by the time he's done, he gets to 10, you know, he'll, wherever that would be, he would put the one here and the zero here for 10. And that will help them learn place value. So all of this made complete sense to me. And I do not remember how I learned math. I've always been fine at math. I wouldn't say great at math. I would definitely say I'd get to the right answer. But my mom would often say, when she was homeschooling me, she would say, you would get the right answer, but you wouldn't have any clue how you got there. You couldn't explain to me how you got there. It was either something I memorized or something I somehow just knew. <laughs> I don't know how to explain that. But with this method, I felt like it gave me a clear understanding of the whys and the hows behind how you are learning to um, recognize numbers, recognize amounts, add amounts, eventually get into some subtraction and things. And then this is the um, student's book. So really, I'm holding this and reading it. He actually doesn't even look at this. Um, he just sat at the table. Uh, this is actually his spot at the table. He has a little mat from his kid's company, a silicone mat that does, keeps everything from slipping. So he will put his notebook on there and then he will just uh, follow my direction. So there's a quick overview of what's in here as far as what they cover. Overview of the lessons. She explains the difference between, guys, bear with me, I'm sorry. One-handed filming here. The symbol for the idea, um, pure number, when to advance, how to pace, all that's in here. She's got the scope and sequence again. She's got the supplies that you need. It's all stuff around the house. I did not purchase the um, manipulatives box um, for this go round. So um, we started just with lesson one. I read all of this to him. He wrote the symbol on, um, we have a little chalkboard that I call a slate. So that's what we called it. And he wrote the number on there and then he wrote it in his notebook. And that was the extent of, you know, lesson one. And we got as far in the end, at the end of kindergarten, we got through the number four. I'm sure we will go back and review these because I want to make sure that he still has a firm grasp of all this. But we just did everything, just in order. And if we, like, let's say we got here and he was seeming tired, I just saved that for the next day. So we stopped at introduction of signs, and he kind of knows what a, um, a plus symbol and a minus symbol is. Uh, already so you know this will probably be familiar to him but he's not it's not uh, concrete yet <laughs> put it that way um, I would circle the ones that he either struggled with or that maybe he was losing interest and I thought well I'll go back and ask that another day so that's his that's as far as we've gotten so far and he's really enjoyed it I did want to mention before I show the manipulatives I do have that you can print out a pretty decent sized sample of this book online. Um, I did that first when I was first looking at this and I thought maybe I wasn't going to purchase this book before Sarah reached out to me and gave me that awesome deal. Um, so I was just going to use this as far as it would take me along with the teacher's book. And then um, once I got through, I was going to evaluate, you know, how's this going? Um, do we want to continue to use this? And then maybe I would have purchased this, but it all worked out. So yay, <laughs> I got that. And then, um, I just bought some wooden dowels at the uh, dollar store and popsicle sticks. So those will be for his um, tens bundles. And then these we use, I'll just show you a quick example. I do remember this lesson because it was really fun and he enjoyed it. So we had these laid out and we were do working on the number three. And I said, pick out three dowels. He picked out three dowels. I said, count them forward. And he went, one, two, three. I said, now count backwards from three. And he went, three, two, one. And that was part of the lesson for the day. It was super easy. And um, he got it right away. So that was great. And then these were a find last year uh, at that homeschool consignment store I keep talking about. I'm not going to tell you the name because if you don't live here, it's not a franchise. So there's no point. But look around in consignment stores. You never know what you'll find. Um, these were the Montessori beads. And he will make his own bead bundles as part of this curriculum. But I thought this was nice for days that we don't maybe have time or we're reviewing if we don't want to make a bundle. If I feel like he's grasped, like let's say he's grasped tens. He fully understands tens and we're going to count by tens today. We could just pick these up and count them by tens. And also they're really pretty. And I like to look at pretty things 
while we're doing our schoolwork. That's just me. <laughs> That's never going to change about that aspect of our homeschooling. So um, this was uh, $5 at that homeschool store that I keep talking about. I wish they had one in every state or every town because it's so nice. But anyway, so there's sort of an overview of what this looks like. Um, if you have any questions, I'll be glad to answer them. As I said, we're only in probably the fourth or fifth lesson. Um, he is adding small sums already. So going into first grade, he's going to have a little bit of a head start in here, but we're just going to take our time and um, enjoy the process. Um, I don't remember if this is the exact size that they recommend. I did that because he needs a lot of space to write, as you can see. And I wanted him to be able to see things really clearly and not have that be a hindrance. So I think the older they get, the smaller the squares get, which makes sense. So this is the student. This is the teacher. Just a few manipulatives. And then I also have a jar full of beads over here on my school cart, which I can give a preview of another time. You can see I'm right down there. <laughs> so um, that would be for him to make bead bundles when we're doing fives and tens and Whatever, whenever we're skip counting, that would be good for him to make um, with uh, pipe cleaners and things and beads. So anyway, I hope all this has been helpful. I want to provide videos that help you um, decide whether or not you should purchase something or if it's something maybe it's not going to fit with what you're doing. Um, but I don't want to go on too long. So definitely let me know down below if there's anything you want to see a video on. I uh, am a full-time homeschool mom. I have a part-time home business. Uh, I roast coffee. If you like coffee, you and I would probably be really good friends. <laughs> so anyway, I am quite busy, but I'm super happy to do this for you guys if it would help another mom. Because I know oftentimes I immediately go to YouTube if I'm looking at a curriculum to see, okay, what's inside of it? Is it worth the value? Is it something that fits in with our educational goals and that type of thing? So anyway, um, I thank you so much for watching these videos, for commenting, for subscribing. Um, I'm so, so thankful for all of you guys. And if there's anything I could share that would be helpful to your homeschool, just let me know below. And I will see you in my next video.